Come on, come here. Just lay down. Sit. Sit. Hey there. <laughs> hello, hello. Welcome to the sixth <laughs> episode of the Steve Sash Schwartz podcast, where we discuss all things related to contemporary art. And today we're going to do a discussion with the abstract painter Holden Fuller. And uh, Holden and I know each other from exhibiting together someplace downtown LA and we just really connected and um, I love his endless curiosity I love the cross-generational thing because when I first uh, my jumping off point into fine art was through kind of like an abstract expressionist process very much process art total abstract vocabulary and I could see what this guy's doing you know, like decades later, but, you know, parsing the information of the internet and the contemporary world and Donald Trump and COVID and what have you. So it's really interesting to see. And we also connected on the level of just something the guy clearly has to do. He's extraordinarily prolific. Um, it's probably going to be some kind of rising star in the art world. And uh, we're going to basically get into his work. So this is Holden. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for being here. So you want to tell us a little bit about your background, like uh, where you're from, uh, how'd you get into art, all this kind of good yeah. stuff? Like, well, so I grew up in LA, live like pretty much all over the place. In LA? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then part part of like middle school part of elementary school and high school i was at my mom's i lived with my mom in out in like san bernardino oh yeah and did she was she, did she have any interest in art is that how you got interested in art like where's your no probably from my dad art? oh yeah yeah he was like he was an artist and like he did a lot of architecture stuff so lots of drawing so he already had like the materials around so I think that was like, I was seeing that as a kid, just influenced me more. All right. So you grew up down here in LA and your dad sort of introduced you to art a little bit. And then, uh, so what was the big trigger? What got you to be like just a little firecracker? Like all you do is paint, paint yeah. and you like, you paint profusely. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, there's gotta be like a story there. Cause you could have yeah. gone to college and become a dentist or an accountant or right. you know historian whatever <laughs> it was probably when i started to go down to when i started to go to that art school in downtown oh where'd you go um to vapa it's called and what year was that it was in 2016 or 2015 or 14 actually okay so you went to yeah. art school and like how come you went to art school and not like an ordinary like college or whatever well, it just seemed, I was like already into art and it just seemed like a cool opportunity to be able to get into the school because it was actually kind of hard to get in. So once I got in, I had to go. Okay. So you just got in there and started going nuts and yeah. that's it. And then I started pretty much just like ditching school every day and just like skating downtown and painting. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> most of that, most of the time I was there, I was just like gone. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you were sort of like in art school, but kind right. of doing your own thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. So then you just kept up with it me, and, uh, let me grab my dog real quick. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. She kind of fucked it up. I think. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Here we go. Second leg of this. this is fun times. <laughs> All right. So you were downtown at an art school and ditching most of it yeah and uh did you have a job or why were you ditching it if it was an art school didn't you want to sit around paint and learn about art or like what was that about yeah it was they were just like asking too much like out of it like on like the academic level like they wanted all their students to go to like great colleges and stuff like that Oh, after this? So this was yeah. not a college? It was like a separate art school or is it art college? or what? No, it's what? an art high school. 
Oh, it's an art high school. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, I didn't get that part. Yeah. All right. And so you had no interest in like pursuing a collegiate degree and whatever? No. no. I didn't want to go into debt paying for school when I could just use that money to buy paint and paint myself, you know? So when would you say did you get like set on fire and started doing works like this and what have you? Um, like it was just like a calling and you just kept following that or like can you walk us through that a little bit yeah i mean i was really just like i don't know i i always actually like painted big for some reason like i could never like paint small like okay. even some of my really early paintings are just like fucking huge right so um why don't we jump ahead a little bit and talk about like what you're doing with like these works and everything. And this is like, how many years have you been out of like school and everything at this point? Like I graduated in 2016. Okay. Yeah. So you've been like painting for seven years, really intensely. Yeah. Seven, eight, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's just talk about this. Like what's going on here? Like there's like, so much abstract stuff, gestural stuff. It yeah. looks like graffiti inspired. There's like spray paint. It looks like from spray cans. There's, you know, uh, death heads and yeah. bones and stuff. This one's actually a collab with a friend named EM. EM? Yeah. Who's EM? He does like uh, quasi abstract works, some like figurative, like almost like folk arty. Oh, right on. Yeah. So do you do a lot of collaborative pieces? No, I mean, we did this one, and then we did a couple other. We did that one. It's there behind the camera. Mm -hmm. And that, actually, that purple one in the corner, that's another collab. So what so kind of just... informs, like, a lot of your decisions of, like, some of the stuff that's going into your work? Um, I don't know. I just I paint a lot of, like, really dark, like, creatures I think I don't know why I'm drawn to it but there's always like these like really dark creatures that come out of it I never like really mean to do it but I just appear and then I give them like faces so you're working like, in this world like it's like in between figurative and abstract you yeah use old fashioned way. because you are doing representational stuff but right. yet every mark makes it so this thing yeah. could 100 percent be abstract if you wanted it right. to right you could totally go in that direction so many of these things like oh they have like associations like to graffiti to bubble letters to right. a skull to whatever but you could also say oh no it's just that thing yeah you know it's just no it's its own thing unto itself right yeah so um like where is that coming from like emerging from the unconscious or like the the internet the world we all inhabit yeah. and everything or like what's happening with all that because maybe just like the environment that i live in maybe like which environment in la you know seeing a lot of graffiti on the streets like because i was never really into like actually doing graffiti on the streets I mean, i have friends that were into it but i never really did it but i think just like seeing it every day on the streets you know totally it yeah. like gets into you right yeah. that's the same way i grew up with so many graffiti writers many got real famous and i never i always admired it but i was mm -hmm. not a writer i never pretended to be you yeah. know but i always admired it you know and i also saw it influencing my work too and right. like creeping out yeah. creeping into my work and I, you know it's a really powerful powerful vocabulary they're using out there man yeah. so yeah because I'm the strip away, you know, to like pictures like that and everything, right. or cut away, whatever they can call it. But that thing really has graffiti references yeah. like all throughout, yeah, bubble exactly. letters and throw ups and whatever. Yeah. And yet it's 100% abstract, it's real lush, goopy oil paint. Right. And uh, I thought it was so funny, like walking in here, I'm getting like paint all over me. It's like, oh, I remember <laughs> I used to like walk to my studio, I had gloves on to here and yeah. gallons of oil paint. You could not sit or stand anywhere or you're going to be covered. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> that feels like home. Yeah. <laughs> I totally get that. 
Yeah. Wow. So I love the whole process layered thing because it seems like beneath here, like on subsequent mm -hmm. layers or your original layers, you're like spray painting. And I see uh, for everybody that's just listening, he's got all kinds of stuff like on the floor that you walk on. So everything's creating a history, tracing time. And then you're going to like be painting upon that and it's going to say and indicate something. Mm -hmm. So it's a real lively environment. So there is like a that kind of building process going on, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, they build over time. I'm not just like, I don't work on one painting at a time. I'm oh, working really? on like 10 or 20 paintings. 10 or 20? Yeah. Of different sizes? Yeah. Wow. And, and why the, is that? Back there I have like big rolls of canvas. Oh, yeah. They're just rolled up. Oh, yeah. So a lot of those aren't even finished. They're just, I just roll them up for a while, stick them away, pull them out in a couple of months. That's so interesting. Look at them again. And how come you work that way? I'm just I curious because like, personally, like, I have to throw all my eggs in one basket. Right. I do one bang. I got to finish that, and I can't even do anything, even if it's going nowhere, until I'm released from that piece. Right. Sculpture, paint, whatever it is, and it's like okay. No. Not to and like, yeah. I can't do multiple, and I've tried actually, yeah. and I can see the efficiency and all that, but then I, no, it just, so how does that work for you? I think it's just like sometimes, if I'm just working on one thing at a time, I just get really like, really stuck at a certain point, like very unsure if it's finished or not finished. And then sometimes I'll just like fuck a painting up, like, and then there's just like way too much fucking paint on this thing. You know, it's way too fucking heavy. Yeah. And I think I just like like the building up over time. It does show history like, and everything. Yeah. I love like the thick lush paint over the real lean paint. Right, yeah, and that contrast between the background, which is actually like a dye. It's like a fabric dye, the yellow background in this one. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, the mixing up a material. But So you got fabric dye, but you've also got spray can stuff yeah. going on there, and you've got real juicy, yummy-looking oil paint on yeah, there, and God knows one. what else. You know, so they're real, like, mixed-media pieces. Yeah. I think it's interesting how you kind of, like, spit out a bunch of stuff, and, like, in many pieces, but not, like, in this one, mm -hmm. but you would edit out a lot of other areas like right. with these opaque zones and it would yeah. like pop out this zone or pop out that. And uh, that makes for a very, what do you call it, graphic kind of contrast. Yeah. You know, um, and it sometimes uh, makes all these gestural things that all of all these different associations, uh, uh, I mean, look more lively right. or something because they stand out more. I think. Yeah, like that one, the whole thing was just like covered and then I just came in with that with that one color and just like blocked out a lot of the painting. I love that. And so, then it just makes that thing just come like pop out at you, you know. It's like this foreground effect. Yeah, the whole figure ground thing and then like the editing is so important but then when you're Xing out stuff, the Xed out stuff becomes its own vital right. kind of area it's yeah. a lively space it's not just like you're not supposed to see it or something yeah <laughs> yeah wow so how are things good so you're working on like 20 different things at the same time and um are you getting any visibility what do you think about the whole like la art scene are you just working on the underground and doing your own thing like uh, through life and social media and yeah. this kind of thing or like what what's going on with you kind of just doing the underground thing No, like galleries or anything like that. No shows coming up Which is kind of nice. I feel like Just like working on paintings don't have any like obligation or anything like that But it could be cool to sh like throw together some shows Some like real underground shows in LA. I think would be sick so would you rather do some underground, like off the beaten path type show or like have some high profile thing in a glitzy gallery? I feel like the underground thing would be cooler. 
but it'd be nice to like sell a painting too. <laughs> yeah, the you whole know? underground thing's dope. If you can yeah. like promote it the right, it's like almost you'll have to spend a great deal of time promoting. You got to be yeah. on the scene. You got to know a lot. It takes a certain kind of personality to even do that. It's yeah. a very interesting discussion, like promotion versus making your art, loving hands at home in your studio, pouring your heart and soul out. Yeah, you know, knowing you're doing something bitching and realizing, well, nobody the fuck knows what the heck I'm doing or can <laughs> even possibly see it. And uh, it's really funny because fortunately now we have like the whole social media thing and that's a real venue into the world. But like, you know, it's like sitting on a boiling volcano, the whole thing. And every yeah. time they change the algorithm, suddenly, like, for example, Instagram throttles the reach. So like you can't freaking do, you post something and unless you have already, because it's not going anywhere, anywhere right. and nobody's yeah. going to see it. So that's really frustrating when it used to be like a really robust kind of venue, yeah. you know, which also has something to do with why I'm doing these podcasts so we can like <laughs> diversify, yeah. this thing can compound over time. Your freaking great grandchildren can look at, <laughs> oh, look at my yeah. great, great grandfather, what a goofy, funny dude he was you know yeah. in 2023 post the pandemic and all that shit like i think it's fascinating like i didn't have this technology you know years ago like when i was your age for right. example and it was a big fucking to do to get it you could do these interviews it just didn't exist right it just no <laughs> <laughs> and so it's really fun to have like these tools at hand yeah. that are so powerful we could actually do something like i know we have like put punk rock production values, but it's still effective. <laughs> and it's still like it getting works. tons of views and yeah. responses and people can still listen and learn. So I'm really excited about that. It. And it's, it taught me a lot about economics in a way. Like you got to diversify. You can't only show on Instagram. You know, like what if your account gets hacked or your 50 seconds or like right. then like you're starting over again too. Like yeah. all those, um, what do you call it? contacts you're nurturing cultivating maybe making new friends right business like they evaporate and unless yeah. you take it out of that platform which you know you could thicken things up really far just yeah. on that platform. uh like boy it can really <laughs> it affected me yeah. enormously man yeah you, so, you got hacked right yeah i got hacked i had like over eight thousand followers and like six thousand more than 6,000 graduate art students, Yeah, you know, and I tried to make my wall or page, whatever you call it, real scholarly. I think they appreciated that. They kept coming back to it and what have you. And um, not to mention all the collectors, friends, yeah, galleries. And there. it was like, you know, some of these big whales I got back, but I would say like 85 or 90%. You can't remember when it gets to be so many thousand, yeah. right? But you, when you have a history, then you could say, oh, we were chatting about this, blah, 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 and you have a dialogues and right. all that just got completely yeah. evaporated and i'm trying to rebuild but now the culture is different and they want you to make videos and tiktok -y things and that doesn't you know before instagram was great for painters and photographers it's still images it was yeah the number one you know now they're pushing you to do reels and shit <laughs> copying tiktok and so um and if you do that you will get more reach and everything but that's like god you know, what I resent about it, I think, is like they're trying to buy your time. They're buying your attention and you're going through this fucking rabbit hole. And before you know, like, oh, my God, I've been on this for 45 minutes, almost an hour. And like, I haven't gotten dick done. And now they're saying, D -d 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 -d. and I'm thinking like, OK, from a business thing, but also from everybody else in the whole fucking world who's addicted to these cell phones, like they've got you. Right. you know, it's like bringing a, yeah. a knife to a gunfight for <laughs> fuck's sake. Like you start poking around like, oh, what about this? And you want to turn on your notifications. You want to put it on this story and that. You want to share it. It's like, no, I want to do this and talk to story. But what about it? And this person's yelling out for you to respond. No, I want to. They, they nail you. So you, it's really hard to focus, right? right? You got to like filter all that stuff. I know I'm going on a bit of a rant here, but <laughs> it's been like a thing because it, to me, like reputation why, on so many levels, like you know, at one point it was really powerful and effective. So of course, like I'm embittered and I don't understand why the hackers did this. Yeah. They didn't ask for money. They didn't say, ha ha, fucker, you're a dick. We always hate <laughs> really? you. They didn't do anything. What was their it, compensation? What did they get out of it? I have no idea. They reached That's out to me on WhatsApp uh -huh. and they said, 
you own the account. And uh, it was all this writing on top of my account. Everything was in Turkish because uh -huh. I did Google. I was like, what the heck? I didn't know what that <laughs> you didn't know it what sounds silly, yeah. but it ended up being Turkish. And then they emailed me and shit, but they never requested anything and everything was automated. And you go through this infinite loop on meta, like do right. this, do that, it's do just this, do that. doing it really. Yeah. To get my account back. So that went no. And these guys, so they notified me in WhatsApp and then and they own the account. And so, you know, on WhatsApp, like if you respond and the other party sees it, you get these two green checks and right. that doesn't mean they, will respond or they have responded it means they've seen it right. and something on the other end says oh i saw he said hello or yeah. whatever okay so i said dude what are you doing give me my account back yeah okay nothing got a little gray check that means there's something and then i said you stupid motherfucker and then i got really just like what the fuck are you doing ah, you have no idea what you give me my account ah. nothing. nothing and then i did another one no and then i was really like wow is this a bot? Is this actually no? Like, and then I'm like, well, what have they gotten out of it? Because it right. really they impacted me. They didn't ask for me. any money or anything. What? They didn't ask for money no. or anything. No. And I was even thinking, okay, I'm trying to get little points ahead. Like, okay, boy, they, they're going to ask for five hundred, one thousand, right. five thousand. <laughs> what are you prepared to pay, SAS? Because highly likely you're going to pay. You won't get it back. But uh -huh. what's your exposure? What will you right. actually? You know, and I was yeah. actually. But I never had the sure. freaking opportunity. They didn't even I even anything. like reached out through email the same way and nothing, no response. I never said, oh, I'm going to pay you. But I'm like, you yeah. know, I said all these threatening, like enough provocative stuff, like anybody real would have said, like, ha, ha, let's just say, right. fuck you, dude. Or like you would respond. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think it was anybody. It was just a bot that just hacked them. So what's the motivation? Maybe you were just like part of like a whole bunch of people that got hacked. And they just didn't have time to get you, you know. They were getting other people at but the same time. But you think time. they were getting money from the other people or something? They I didn't think bother so. with Maybe, me? Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Because they had me in the palm of their yeah, hands really. right where they wanted me. Shit. And they had me all set up to like, really like, okay, fucker, give yeah. me five grand. And we'll think about <laughs> giving your account back, you know, whatever. So anyway, That's uh cool. You know, I want to use the technology of our era, which is yeah. why we're doing this YouTube thing to, you know, spread the word, like teach. Like these days, mm -hmm. like, dude, we're, you know, uh, cross generational, you know, I'm decades right. older. But at the same time, we're like white artists. Like you got to be black trans with purple polka dots to like get a job at UCLA teaching now or USC <laughs> or, you know, uh, Pasadena art school or whatever. Uh -huh you know, or really know somebody to get in through the back door. So without institutional support, like, what are you going to do today? Yeah. We're going to do this, bitches. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to, like, build this up. That's what I say. Yeah. And anyway, if it doesn't, it's still there. And I think it's, it's still really cool. interesting and yeah. informational. Um, so, like, with that in mind, okay, you're an artist and... Uh, I'll just speak from experience in a zillion art. Like, I want to show my, I don't paint so I could go store it in my garage right, and right. my storage unit downtown. Or no. I want to get it on walls. I want people to enjoy it. I right. want human beings to be moved by my work. And I imagine you do too. Yeah. And <laughs> so this is a venue for that. And if you're not making contacts with art directors and curators and don't know any wealthy people to make those introductions and you're not in a school, it's really freaking really hard, almost yeah. impossible to meet these people. Yeah. Unless you have some great, hilarious personality and bring all that. And not everybody right. does. You're a freaking artist. Now we have to wear a million hats. You know, now yeah. I'm a videographer. Right. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. So um, <laughs> with that in mind, I know you have this like publishing aspect and you've done yeah. several books uh, on other artists you admire and on your own work. And you inspired me and my people to do my monograph. So yeah. thanks for that. That oh, was yeah. very cool. So you want to uh, talk about this current project you got going there? This yeah, like, the new, new book. coffee table book you uh -huh. got going? Should we move some of this stuff here? So like, what's going on? So first of all, uh, 
that looks substantial. That looks like, okay, this is a real artist. You got to take right. this guy serious. So <laughs> what's your whole strategy and tactic and why are you doing this? Uh, I don't know why I'm doing it. <laughs> it kind of just started as this like drawing series and then it got out of hand and then Show the I, camera a I got bit. the idea to make a book out of it. And now I'm just like, now I got to fucking fund this goddamn book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a self-motivated project, but it looks so yeah. pro these days. It's amazing what you can do. All right. And so these yeah, are I all mean, drawings, I know a lot of not Photoshop. paintings. What? Yeah, I'm like good at Photoshop and everything. Mm -hmm. I've always done that. I'm doing clothes. So this is a series of, uh, a series of current drawings and right. paintings, or they're all... Uh, they're all small drawings. They're all small drawings. They're like eight and a half by 11 or uh, seven by 10. But they're not, they're watercolor. You're using mixed media, no, all kinds of materials. Is, this right? is actually all fabric dye. Fabric dye? Yeah, I use fabric dye to dye all this paper. They look so and cool. Then, and then these images right here, I ran it through the printer. Oh, like yeah? a house printer. Uh huh. And I printed a lot of stuff and then I drew on them. And is this to catalog where you're at or is this to be no, like, a like a stance a against the internet thing? Like, okay, I have this analog thing this is a real object that right. here you go here's my work like where, where are you coming from and also it looks so like legit like oh this guy's picasso or mark <laughs> Rothko or something you know what i mean it's like so tell us about that and look at that how many pages is the book i don't know there's like over like 100 drawings it looks so, way more than 100 pages <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know it's also really nice like thick paper like yeah, it's like a hundred pounds or something like that, or one twenty. Beautiful. And so, what are the uh, what are your promotional? What's your strategy with this? So you're you're gonna do uh, a run of X number, and like, what you're gonna right. do with those? You're gonna sell them in bookstores. You're gonna give them away to your I'm gonna, friends. I got a website I'm working on that I'll probably sell them on there, and then I'm gonna look into like a couple bookstores try to get it into. There's a couple like low key kind of like little bookstores that I think could take it. So Maybe some art bookstores. Very cool. So yeah. you're doing it on the down low? Yeah. On the underground? Yeah, I think that'd be you cool. You should sell it at Village Works NYC. Those guys show my, yeah. sell my book there. Dude, dude, Henry was just there. He's seen your book there. <laughs> he walked, he randomly walked into this bookstore and then he, they, your book was right there, he said. Dude. It was sick. He, and then he, he sent me a picture, too. It was funny. Because he just moved to, to New York. He's in New York now? Yeah, he just moved to New York. Like, Holy maybe fuck. like a couple weeks ago. Awesome. Good to know. Oh, is that my beer? Yeah. Hey, Did the uh, guy come? Thank yeah. you. Oh, cool. I never thanks. Got hey, a, how's it going? Good, thanks. I never got uh -huh. an email or a text. Well, because someone was there to pick it up. Yeah, I know. All right, I we got the beer installment. I thought I had to give him my, out, yo. my ID. Should I pause this or just keep it going? We can just keep it going. Hey, we got some beers, though, huh? Yeah. Uh, you going to use your lighter? Let me see uh, if I have that thing there. Up oh, here. Pacifico. Yeah. So I would say with global warming and stuff, you might want to invest in a little micro air conditioner for your unit. Yeah. It is roasting in here. Yeah. For everybody just watching, laughing at us. Like, <laughs> we're sweating. Yeah, we're trying to look good. We're in pants and stuff, but geez, it is like <laughs> hot. Yeah, so I think I'm going to start painting outside this summer in the backyard. Ooh, I did that until yeah. like... Where I live is like 20 or 30 degrees yeah. hotter, and it's just like you really can't after yeah. a minute. Right. Like early morning, late evening, you can. But yeah, but midday. When I impossible. first moved there, like right after 2020, like I spent almost the entire summer working entirely outside, and it uh -huh. was fabulous. Yeah. And it didn't get unbearable to like late September or some crazy thing. But now it's like, I ain't going outside. <laughs> it's only July. <laughs> no. It's like, oh my God. So, cool. Uh, anything else you want to add or talk about, like motivations or where you think the whole art world's going or any of this kind of thing or 
What's happening with you? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> uh, definitely like to like do some art shows. Would be cool. Yeah, that um, would be a good thing to strategize. So we were just talking about your book. Yeah. And how you're gonna like sell it maybe at some bookstores or pass it around and do some promotional thing. So um and you see yourself doing more of those. It seems like it's something yeah. like you're not just good at, like you're into it too. You're yeah, like, yeah. Like it's, I, I it like, gives you a lot of satisfaction. I do like doing, doing them. it. Yeah. Right, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna make it into a a publishing company, I think. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. What's the name of the company? Yeah, Should Stone promote. Age. What? Stone Age. Stone Age Publishing? Yeah. Or what, Stone Age It's just going to be just called Stone, Stone Age? Age. It's not just going to be publishing. I think it's going to be... hilarious. Like, we'll do, like, T-shirts, like this shirt that I did here. We'll oh, do yeah. different T-shirt collabs show the t -shirt with there? artists. The that's, back is cool. Like when the you're back's drawing. a drawing I did. Yeah. On the front. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Did you screen it here or do you like print on demand kind of thing? No, I like, got these professionally done. Oh, they're like yeah. legit, like yeah. higher quality t shirts. But I am going to print some. Like, I got some screens over there that I'm just waiting for some shirts. So I'm going to put all those on the website too. But so, I think I want Stone Age to just kind of be like where, like, we'll just like, we help artists in like creating. Like maybe like a special project or something that they want to do. Maybe that's a book. Maybe it's a shirt. You know, maybe it's an art show. Have you considered the economics of that? Like, are they going to pay to do it? Or like, how does Wait, that all work? Or the like, artist? Yes. How, who's going to pay for the book? Your company? No, yeah, yeah. We would pay for everything. And we would help them promote it and get it out there. Right. Age-old issues, Just but cause... everything's changing so fast. So um, what I do you think? Promoting, like, other, I love promoting other artists that I like, too. That's I feel a... like I have a little bit of, like, a business kind of aspect to it, too. You yeah, have a cool aspect to your person. A lot of artists are just, like, every person, every artist for themselves. You know, they ain't right. going to help nobody. Right. And... <laughs> Let me tell you, 99% of the artists are like, but like, it's very cool to come across someone like you who like, yeah, wants to bring other people up and show yeah, them yeah. at their best and make them, he's the best painter in the room, for fuck's sake, right. look at this shit, you know? Yeah. Like, I love that. I think that's what it's about, community. And yeah, like this, building a community of some kind. It's hard to do, too. A real man. underground community. But in this capitalistic world, like, it's always like every person in front of themselves. But it seems like if you know, you could bring up a group and bring up a community. Yeah. It's like way more powerful, way more exciting, way more fun and satisfying mm -hmm. for everybody, you know? Yeah, and it's always like a lot more like, because you bring in more people because all those people that you bring, they bring someone else with them, you know? So it just becomes like this big, it's like community of people. Ideally, Which yeah. Is, Somehow I've learned through the decades, like, the art world doesn't always work that way. No. It's always, oh, it shit. What? We got a brown out. I got to stop this. That's hilarious. But, <laughs> like, we're still going here. Oh, should we keep going? That's hilarious. That's okay, let's just keep going. We got the one light. Okay, so, that thing go out. and this thing's working, and we're working. That's hilarious. That's crazy. Okay, so this is testimony to the freaking heat wave. Yeah. We weren't making it out. Now we got a brown out. All the power shut off. <laughs> but our tech is working, so we can continue. <laughs> it doesn't look too bad on there. So, whoa. There we go. <laughs> Quick commercial. Hilarious. No, let's not. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now I've lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? Yeah, promotion, mm -hmm. self-promotion, using these tools that we it's Yeah, like it's cool that you're bringing up, up like other artists and creating a community and I'm all about that but I realize like every artist has to pay their utilities and right. you know do all that good stuff and it is not an easy road and 
yet they have this great creative spirit and they don't want to have some ordinary job doing this or that, but they all probably have to. And uh, they pay their bill. It's not easy, man. There's so many really talented artists there. And you see all these galleries and everybody having a show like every month and they're mm -hmm. younger, they're this, they're that. And you're like, holy cow, like somebody's making some bank. And on the <laughs> other hand, like all the artists, like, I don't know. I know a whole handful of super famous ones. I know a whole handful of people just doing their thing. And yeah, it's making like art. you, they're making frames, they're doing construction, right. they're doing whatever. And just painting on the side. Yeah. yeah. And as time goes by, like some of these real talents, man, they actually stop, which to me is heartbreaking, but I get it. And it gets kind of like unbearable having this financial stress. Yeah. And like you get to be a certain age and like all your friends and colleagues that maybe non-artists uh -huh. like are retiring or they're going to Hawaii right. they're going to like, well, I'm paying taxes, my tax <laughs> for being an artist. And I'm gladly paying my tax because yeah. I can't do dick. I don't have yeah. money to do dick, but guess There's what? No I can paint every day. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, okay, that's kind of some of the life choices I made. And now, at my age, they're coming there. It's like, dude, what have you done? You should have been making bank. And then <laughs> and everyone else, like, you're getting all this advice. Like, well, don't do that. You don't even know by the time, like, you're 65, 70, like, we have any energy to do all that. So, you know, right. I was just like, man, you gotta do unmoored. It. I'm an artist. I'm yeah. doing this. I never hesitated for a minute. But, like, now that reality is becoming so, like, crystal and clear to yeah. me like holy fucking cow especially like with kids and shit and i'm like oh my god you know unless i'm like a jeff coons which i am nowhere near there this is like a really tricky proposition right like mother fucking hell and i don't want to like burden them with unsold art or like yeah. all this stuff you know i want and it's so hard to have like um what do you call it some established professional Careers like oh yeah, just contact these gallerists and they're going to give you residual. Right. Contact Sotheby's, right? You know, like, <laughs> right, suckers. Like, hopefully, I'll make those kind of connects and it will all have a happy ending. But mm -hmm. uh, it's not yeah, easy because another thing, like I call this being on the art train. You're on the fucking art train, yeah. or you're not, and that's how we relate. Or I feel like for me. Right. Because I'm on the art chain, I can't help it. I'm compelled to do this, make all these terrible life decisions. But yeah. guess what? I'm still fucking painting yeah. every day. School and like, and other people would say this guy is mentally ill. Right. Send him away. <laughs> what a fucking idiot! But you're on the art train. You're yeah. on it, or you're not, and you can't help it when you're yeah. on it, right? And when you fall off it, it's a big fucking void. Yeah. It's a big bump, and you, I can't. I have no sense of grounding or like, you know, anything that matters unless like it surrounds producing art in some freaking way. Yeah. Right. I feel like we had like no choice really. Yeah. So have you always been, exactly. uh, had that compulsion in you like that? I think partly. Yeah. I mean, I used to do like a lot of photography too before I was painting. Oh yeah. You're a good yeah. photographer. Mo, he wants to be in the, the podcast. Oh, okay. oh. No, but you could take him. Get out of here, Mo. Oh, oh, oh. Go. Go. <laughs> Go, big Mo. Oh, he's a cutie. So. Yeah, I feel like we really have no choice now. We're just like drawn to painting. That's like. We just have a compulsion to paint. Like, we can't help ourselves, you know. I thought that's how it was with you because you just keep spitting all this stuff out and it's not like you got, yeah. you know, a hundred collectors knocking on you or say, no. hold and give me this, hold and give me that, hold on, <laughs> give me a small one, give me, you got one in pink, you know, like yeah. nobody's, you know, and you're just doing it and like, I'm the same way and then I look around like, what am I doing? Like, oh my God, <laughs> I got to move the stuff. And yeah, it's like, horrible. The marketing is a whole other thing than the making of it, right? Yeah. And I always work super big, so like, so just to try to move all this shit is such a fucking hassle. I hear you. And I can't like work like small really, unless I'm working on paper. You do works. Your works on small are real. I mean, your small pieces are really strong. Why do you say you don't work small? 
I see small pieces well, I, all over here. I do <laughs> do small. I don't like to do small. Pieces, ah. I say that. I find I'm struggling. That's very different because you seem yeah. really good at the small things. I like you to just work a lot on paper. Yeah, but I just love to like make them huge. Good point. Like so, these things that look so cool, they look like huge paints. Like how big are they? They're all eight and a half by eleven. They're so tiny. you work small very effectively. Yeah, but those are drawings. I feel like I can't do the same. Your drawings look like paintings. Yeah. Did you ever think about that? No, I would I, say I your do. drawings look exactly like your I paintings. I do want to make them bigger. But you have more of like a limited palette. Right. But otherwise, they look like paintings to me. Well, I understand how you're thinking about that. Yeah. yeah, they're this size. It's a drawing. Right. And yeah. it's a way to market it, too, for sure. Now, what I do want to make those like, like make some of the ones in the book like super big. Oh, really? Like blow them up onto canvas. Like, I just got to figure out how to like print the images and like I'd have to dye the canvas. I love all the different techniques. And so then I'd print. Probably, yeah, I'd probably print on it, which I'm thinking of doing, doing like a cyanotype. Oh, yeah. Which is like a sun print where you put like, like a clear film of like an image onto like the treated canvas or paper or whatever. And then you expose it to the sun, and then that image is image prints onto the paper. So I want to try that maybe on some large canvas. That would make a really nice history. Yeah, that sounds really cool. And then paint over that. Yeah, I love the exploration of different techniques and like not saying, "Oh, I can't print it because I didn't." do it by hand. I'm just going to print this out and glue it on there with some Mod Podge and put <laughs> right. something freaking over it. It's very cool, like, messing around with all these materials, so... Yeah, I like to explore different things. Yeah. I get that. I mean, you're really called upon to, like, pursue this kind of curiosity and see where it ends up, which brings right. me to this point, like, um, what do you think about artificial intelligence and that impact on the art world, which everybody's going nuts about for the right. last three or four weeks. Yeah, I wonder what that will look like in like 20 years, you know? But like I, with all like the NFT stuff, like what happens if like the internet just goes down and dies? How do you get your NFT? You know, <laughs> isn't it just gone to the ether? It is. Because you can't access it unless there's internet. It's only digital. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Like, but my thing with the whole AI and creativity is I just think it's such bullshit because I actually know professional artists using this to generate images. And I guess, right. you know, they put in these prompts and the thing spits out whatever and it, it is. is. Yeah. And then I don't know if that exists there or then they're going to paint from that. So it's actually an analog thing that the initial idea was generated by AI, but to me, it's like so irrelevant to art. I'm sure that might come back to bite me, but I just think <laughs> uh, my whole point of entry anyway is like, I want to do this myself. I don't want yeah. any computer assistance. Right. This is a yeah. personal journey or it's like having a meal. You prepare, you buy the ingredients, you prepare it, you eat it with your eyes, you eat it with your mouth, you get nutrient, you enjoy it. I don't need something to like have that experience for me and say, okay, this is the result. Like this is your beautiful piece of art or yeah. whatever. Like what? I want to find that for myself. And yeah, with actual paint on canvas or something, you know, like yeah, the like whole that, materiality. Yeah, like part. you don't get any of that. It's just you just click a button and it just makes it. Anything right. that AI would generate would just be a reassembling of pixels in some way and has yeah. no, like, look at that painting it has so much juicy brush strokes. I mean, something that freaking oil paint yeah, like is like half something... an inch thick, for God's sakes. Like, it's not a flat surface like right. a painting. Like, what are you going to do? You got AI or like, this thing is all like, ah, crazy. Yeah. I love it. The fucking paint casts a shadow, for God's sakes. Yeah. Okay, it's got depth, <laughs> uh -huh. right? And Like, so, could AI even generate something like that? Maybe it could and do some 3D printing. It could do an abstract thing for sure, right. no question. But then, like, how it spits it out in reality, 
would be really I flat think, unless yeah, they did it different. through a 3D printer to have right. some meat to the material. And then, like, what's the fucking point? And, like, oh, for God's sakes, like, you know, let human beings be human beings, for uh -huh. God's sakes. Right. I don't know. I, I mean, I know a lot of people are mortified about this, and I think economically and everything, it's enormous. But for the art world, I see it pretty splintering. And I could see people manifesting whole careers like, I'm an AI artist. This is what I do. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that old That's school happen. oil paint. They get all oil. over me. Oh, it's nasty. Yeah. I'm just going to do some prompts on my computer. This all those is my work. Goals. You know? Like, this would be perfect for Jeff Koons. Like, oh, I'm going to do this. Make me this. Make me this little Donald Duck, uh -huh. 50 stories tall. <laughs> and show me how bitching that will look in Chrome. <laughs> Whatever. You know? And, like, it's perfect for that guy. Yeah. Honestly. And other people. He probably uses it. <laughs> conceptual artists. I don't think. Um, I just think for process art, for people like getting their hands in the clay. Their elbow deep for guys or their hands in the paint or you know like yeah it's almost ridiculous it's not even part of the discussion really but the only reason i'm bringing it up because it's now and it's super it's so powerful trendy, and yeah. it's going to be more and more part of the discussion yeah so i'm just interested in like your spin on it and the whole thing you know yeah i wonder what wonder where it will be in 10 years, what it's going to look like. I know, and then I wonder about like, what paintings what like this. What actual like, painting is, yeah. Look at stuff like what you're doing now. and pro like, In some ways, you know, abstract expression, that's been that's done over. almost like 80, 100 years, like a long time, yeah. since the 40s, right? And like, this thing, how is that could not, that could have been done in the 20th century, right? right. Or this, yeah. really, like, in the East Village in the eighties, there were like skulls and crossbones right. and death's heads like everywhere, stencil, graffiti, blah blah blah. And, and there was process art and stuff in Boston. Like yeah. this feels like okay. I don't know. Like Somehow this street. feels new. It feels like fresh today. The paints what you know, and at the right. same time I could see this like, well, how come this couldn't have been done in the twenties? It yeah, could have. It could have, yeah. It could have been done in eighteen eighties, eighteen nineties, yeah. the late 1890s, you know, <laughs> late 1990s, fucking absolutely. I kind of think about that, like where we position our stuff, like in time, like in, like if you take the 30,000 foot view, you know, yeah. like what are we doing? What okay, does it look like? Yeah. You're making, pro I'm doing kind of process abstraction in my own way. Maybe it's more geometric abstraction. I'm using right. more like collage -y type stuff, but it's still a process. Yeah. You know, it's still like the motivation is like, hmm, what do I do? Well, I don't know. Let me try this. <laughs> yeah, you know, like exactly. that kind of thing. <laughs> Not that quite Neanderthal, but it sort of is very, <laughs> yeah. it's very liminal, right? You're just right. like working from intuition. Yeah. I'm not working from any guiding principle. Like I want to talk to rich well, people in the south of France, so I'm going to use this palette and the shape. You know, it's like it doesn't even enter my fucking head, yeah. you know, or I want to talk to like graffiti artist in like Coney Island. You know, I'm not, I'm just like painting. I'm doing me, you know? Mm -hmm. But I kind of do think about like that. Like, how is this related to our period versus like, how come this wasn't done in the 20th century? And maybe it was, and it makes you reevaluate. Like, oh, may I get up my <laughs> game? And I'm gonna like, make it look like more part of our time and stuff.